Welcome to the first of two modules on cardiac ultrasound or point of care echo. This is module number one, parasternal long and short axis. I'm Dr. Gordon Johnson from Legacy Health. First, we're going to go over the learning objectives and we're going to want to be able to identify the right transducer and the settings to use with cardiac ultrasound. Then we're going to discuss patient positioning. We're going to discuss the technique of using the landmarks and anatomy to identify the proper first two of five cardiac views. The first one being the parasternal long axis, or often abbreviated PSLX. The second one being the parasternal short axis. And within this view, we get three subviews on the aortic valve view, the mitral valve or fish mouth view, and then the midventricular or papillary muscle view. We'll discuss briefly some of the findings of uh, heart failure in these two views, but there's going to be much further discussion uh, during the cardiac pathology module. And then on the second module, we'll talk about the apical, subcostal, and IVC views. So first, which of the probes do you choose to do the cardiac? Uh, this one's easy. You're always going to want to use the phased array, or often referred to as the cardiac transducer or probe. This is because it's very good with its narrow footprint to view in between the ribs here to get a good cardiac view. So the different transducers you'll see at Legacy, we want to choose one of these, which is either the Sonocyte or Lumify phased array probes. Of course, you can use your butterfly, which is the three probes in one. You just need to set it to the cardiac settings. So you want to hold your uh, transducer like a pen and then you can't see here, but you want to anchor to the chest wall with the fourth and fifth digits because the difference between a good view and a bad view can just be a few millimeters of movement or a few uh, points of angulation. So on these, uh, these are the four cardiac views here. So the two we're going to be talking about is the parasternal long and short. Both of them obtained here from the left parasternal area designated here. So again, the parasternal long axis and short axis on the left, we'll discuss later the apical and subcostal views. So just to show you the parasternal long axis view first, this is what you're going to be looking at. And then to review the anatomy, you're going to have the right ventricular outflow track here. You're going to have the aorta and down below the left atrium. And then following the blood, it's going to cross over the mitral valve here, go into the left ventricle, out the aortic outflow track and onto the aorta via the aortic valve. Now when you're setting your depth and gain you'll see that it's gained here so that things aren't bright in here. It's all black and then you're leaving a little extra space down here. You want to also vision down here as the descending aorta. Leave this much or even a little bit more space when you're setting your depth. So the next view is going to be your peristernal short axis. Here you're cutting the ventricle in transverse, so you see this donate sh shape to the left ventricle. You'll often see the right ventricle up here, and it's kind of a uh, croissant shape. We'll see some pictures of that later. Part of that's cut out here. Here's your left ventricle, and then the mitral valve is here, and then we're going to slide down slightly to the papillary muscle view here. Mitral valve again here. Sliding the probe down, you see the papillary muscles there. So when you're um, positioning the patient here for the parasternal long axis, first thing you want to do is get the patient to lie over onto the left side. He puts his right hand over his right hip, and you slide the transducer up and down the left uh, sternum. We're having the patient lie in the back here just so we can see better. We have the probe marker uh, pointed to his right shoulder and we're sliding up and down uh, the sternum there to get the right view. But again, I want to emphasize, if you can, it's much better to lay your patient on the left side. Here is the same patient with the probe in the exact same place, the view you get when he's lying flat, and then when he's lying on his left side, the heart falls nicely against the chest wall. You get a much more bright, crisp picture. So again, just to review the anatomy here, here's a schematic of uh, what the parasternal long axis looks like, and then a anatomical representation of that. 
Here's an actual parastern long axis again. And then again, just a real quick view again, right ventricular, right ventricular outflow track here, left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, left ventricular outflow track, and then the aortic valve. And here for our reading and point of care, we like to look at these three chambers and see that they're approximately the same size, the right ventricular outflow track. Of course, this is not a chamber, it's the aorta. But if it's enlarged, you can see um, here the proximal ascending aortic aneurysm. You can see right ventricular enlargement if this is larger. And then you can see left atrial enlargement here. It's also a great view to look at the valves. And then we'll talk a little bit about how we estimate ejection fraction here. That's by using what we call the EPSS or endpoint septal separation, where the anterior mitral valve leaflet comes up and just about slaps the septum here as it thickens in systole and then as it early opens in diastole. Here we're using this for the M mode, which you can do here. Drop this line right down through the tip of the anterior mitral valve leaflet and you can actually measure it here. So we're watching the mitral valve leaflet go up and down. You can see that here. Here's the septum in M mode. And again, you have to make sure you're right on the tip of this valve here so you're getting an accurate measurement. But here you can see it's 2.37 centimeters, so an abnormal EPSS consistent with a low ejection fraction. Again, here's a normal ejection fraction. You can see the anterior mitral valve leaflet just about touch the septum as it thickens and comes down. Here's a moderately reduced ejection fraction, much less movement seen here, and then severe uh, reduction in ejection fraction. You'll notice in point of care we don't put a percentage that's measured by the echo techs. So we're using the eyeball method here to estimate these on mild, moderate, or severely reduced ejection fraction, a normal ejection fraction, or if this is hyperdynamic like in a sepsis state, uh, you can say hyperdynamic. Now there's a couple other things that can cause an abnormal EPSS. If you have a stenotic valve here, it'll tag down that anterior mitral valve leaflet. If you have a lot of aortic regurgitation, sometimes that pushes that down. So there are a couple entities where you may have an abnormal ejection fraction and have a, a um, abnormal EPSS. You can also have a normal EPSS, but have uh, apical ballooning out here. So it doesn't guarantee that the ejection fraction is normal. Okay, so the next view we're gonna get is the parasternal short axis, and this is obtained by, again, anchoring with your right hand here, and then a clockwise rotation, usually with your left hand, with your eyes looking at the screen here uh, to watch it go from a parasternal long to a parasternal short. So here we're watching the screen, we're turning, we're turning 90 degrees, and now we've got that nice donut view of the left ventricle. We've got the mitral valve view here, and here's the croissant shape of the right ventricle. Here's a view from the other side of the patient. Again, just to remind you now, the probe marker is actually the patient's left side. And in the rest of the views, you're gonna have the probe marker to the left. This is unique to cardiology. Again, just a, re a review of the anatomy here. Left ventricle, here's the papillary muscles. So the mid ventricular view. Right ventricle here, the shape of a croissant. Here's an actual mitral valve view again here. And then to show you why it gets its name, the fish mouth, you can see the mitral valve here. It does have the shape of a fish mouth a little bit. Left ventricle here in front of the screen, if you will. The left atrium would be in back of our screen with the blood coming at us through this valve. Right ventricle up here. Now again, you just want to fan down a little bit from this so to the apex of the heart towards the patient's nipple you fan the beam of the probe and you'll get on this papillary muscle valve view <clears throat> or the mid ventricular view and this is a great view to look and eyeball again the ejection fraction here you can see in this patient there's nice symmetric squeeze of the heart all the walls are moving towards the center so in, by the eyeball method this is a normal ejection fraction with a normal size to the right ventricle. Sometimes if you see right ventricular enlargement here, you'll see what we call the D sign, where it's pushing in on this uh, septum and creating a D rather than a circle up here. We'll talk about that in some of the pathology lectures. So if you fan up um, now up more towards the patient's chin a little bit with the beam, 
you'll get this aortic valve view in transverse and you see the Mercedes-Benz sign here uh, with the aortic valve. You can see the three cusps. So here's an actual patient. Here's the aortic valve in the middle. Now what's interesting about this is you see the right heart actually wrap around the top as you're looking down the barrel of the aorta and the aortic valve. And just to review the anatomy here, the right atrium, the tricuspid valve, the right ventricle, the pulmonary valve comes over here, then the pulmonary arteries. Again, in the center is our aortic valve, and down below here is the left atrium. So we're just going to show you an example of fanning up towards the aortic valve view, down towards the mitral valve view, down further into the papillary muscle view. Again, mitral valve view fanning up. We start to see the aortic valve view here, back down mitral valve view, back down to the uh, papillary muscle. So you can try this uh, when you're doing your uh, scanning of your models.